On day one, ah. I spawned in as a baby villager with only four hearts. My mom and dad were very excited to see me. It's a boy. We love you, son. My dad got very serious. He then poked me. Ow, what the heck? Suddenly, I turned into a full-blown blood villager. We had to make you into one of us before the town burns us alive. We are the last known blood villagers and we needed to keep our bloodline alive. I don't understand. Why would the townspeople do that to you? They are afraid of us. They don't know we are just trying to help. I had more questions, but there wasn't any time. Now, son, take this blood staff. You need to run far away as fast as you can before the villagers see you. Okay, all right, I'm running. I ran as fast as I could, but I was stopped by some villagers. I fought them back with my new blood staff and was even able to kill some. After that, they hesitated and I was able to escape. I reached the top of a hill at a safe distance and realized I had a good view of the village. I then saw my mom and dad at the corner of the village. I watched as they burned my parents alive. No! Mama! Papa! I couldn't believe they would do this to two innocent people just because they were scared of them. I will have vengeance on this village. Mark my words! After mourning my parents, I decided to look for some shelter for the night. The sun went down, and suddenly I was surrounded by zombies. Ah! Leave me alone! And then I realized that they actually did leave me alone. They don't seem to pay attention to me at all. Whew, that was a close one. I decided maybe I didn't need shelter for the night after all, and I wandered in the dark making a plan for the morning. On day two, I decided that if I'm going to carry on my people's legacy as the last blood villager, I'm going to need some tools and a home base. I punched some trees to gather wood. I felt hungry, so I found some wheat and made some bread along the way and a wooden pickaxe. Then I mined some stone and coal and crafted a set of stone tools. Now, where to create my base? I went looking for a nice place to make my base, far away from any civilization and started building a nice little home. As I was crafting and placing some furnaces and chests, I realized I was hungry. Ugh, need blood. I went searching for a village and I had some trouble. Huh, maybe I shouldn't have made my base quite so far from civilization. Eventually I found one and everyone was sleeping. I found a sheep pen and immediately unleashed on them, collecting their meat and wool. But a villager heard the commotion and rang the bell. Blood villager spouted. I ran back home right away. Phew, that was a close one. I made a bed for myself and went to sleep for the night. I woke up on day three and started cooking some of the meat I got from the sheep. Eh, pretty good, but I'm still hungry for blood. I went out traveling and I eventually came across some sort of sacred blood forest. Huh, this looks promising. Suddenly out of nowhere, I was attacked by a big echoer dog. It had sunken hollow eyes and big sharp teeth like razor blades. Ah, this thing is crazy. I fought it with blood magic and eventually killed it. Ha, got him. After the battle, a three-headed entity emerged from behind the trees. Whoa, this place is crazy. Congratulations, Bronzo. You have beaten my challenge. I am the observer of death, and this is my home. What did you challenge me for? I had to know if you were worthy. Okay, well I need some help, and you look like just the guy to help me. I'm a blood villager, and I need some blood very soon, or I'm gonna die. Yes, I know who you are. I have dealt with blood villagers for eons. Great! So can you help me or not? I'm the last of my kind, so we could be extinct very soon if we don't hurry this along. Yes, give me some raw meat, and I will transform it for you. Luckily, I didn't cook all the meat earlier, so I still had some to give him. I handed it over, and he crushed the meat in his hands, and then handed me five bottles of blood. Oh yeah, thank you, finally. After guzzling some blood, I grew into an adult blood villager with 10 hearts. Awesome. Anytime you need blood, just come back here with raw meat. Sweet, thanks again, death guy. I knew I'd like you. I headed back to my base, feeling better than ever. On day four, I decided to do some exploring. I traveled to a desert and came across a group of dead worms. They started attacking me and I had to fight back. Ugh, I thought you were supposed to be dead. I fought them off with my blood staff and they were great fighters, but eventually I was able to kill them all and continue on my journey. Further into the forest, I came across a little red creature who was blowing stuff up. Hey little guy, what you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. Do you live around here? Oh, <laughs> well, you can stay with me if you want. <laughs> I'm gonna call you Boom. 
we started heading back to my base, when all of a sudden, we were ambushed by a group of husks. I fought off the husks with my staff, and Boom helped by blowing them up. Ha! They're no match for us. But wait, why did those zombies fight me, but not the husks? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. When we got back home, I built a little house for Boom, and we both took a little rest. On days five and six, I decided I needed an upgrade for my tools. I went mining for iron, and lots of it. I couldn't wait to get my iron tools, so I built a furnace right there and smelted my iron, then crafted a set of iron tools. I was about to leave the cave when I heard a strange laugh from deep inside. Hello? Who's there? You're being really creepy. I followed the voice to investigate and discovered a witch. Hello, Bronzo. I've been expecting you. How do you know my name? It seems that the prophecies were true. A blood villager would survive the hunt to carry on the legacy. There's a prophecy about me? Cool. What else does it say? You survive the hunt of the villagers only to be defeated by the last Blood Pillager. What? Blood Pillager? You're crazy. Hey, that's the prophecy. Don't shoot the messenger. I guess that means your parents died for nothing. That's a bummer. Hey, don't talk about my parents like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some new iron tools to play. I, I mean, use for important things. Whatever. Don't be a stranger. I'm sure we'll meet again soon. I left the cave and returned to my base. And by the time I got back, I decided I needed to rest for the night. In the early morning before day seven, I had a dream about the blood pillager. Hey, aren't you the guy the witch just warned me about? Yes, as she should. She knows what I'm capable of. What do you want? What don't I want? I finally have the power I've been searching for. And now I can destroy all of the villagers once and for all. Remember the name, Tyrus, the Blood Pillager. No, you can't do that. I won't let you. Bah, what do you care about villagers? Didn't the villagers from your hometown murder your parents? Wow, news travels fast around here. Also, how dare you bring up my trauma? Now I'm really gonna mess you up. Ah, good luck with that. You have so much to learn about your power, and I have already mastered mine. Good thing I'm a fast learner. I woke up from my dream in a fit of rage. Ugh, I'll show him. <laughs> I was visited in my dream by the blood pillager, the one from the witch's prophecy. He's going to destroy every village and kill all the villagers. It is. Just because they're scared of me doesn't mean they all deserve to die. You're right. I should just get back to bed. In the morning, I'll start preparing. On days eight and nine, I woke up ready for action. Hey, boom, we're going on a mining adventure. I set out mining once again to find some more iron and craft a full iron armor set. I smelted the blocks into ingots in my cave furnace and then crafted all of the armor. Nice. Now I can take on anything. Just then, we were attacked by cave spiders. Wait, I didn't mean right now. With my new armor and help from boom, I took out the cave spiders very easily. Ha, piece of cake. After that encounter, Boom told me he wanted some protection too. So I gathered some more iron and crafted another full iron set for him too. Here you go, little man. This should help. We then left the cave and headed back home. On the way, my tummy started rumbling again and I decided it would probably be best to have a consistent source of blood. I need to find some cows. <coughs> Thanks, Boom. I took his wheat, and before leaving, I crafted a pen to hold them in. Then I set out to find the cows. I found them out in the wild pretty easily and resisted the smell of their blood long enough to lure them back to their pen. Welcome home, meat. I mean, cows. I bred them and killed some of them for their meat. After that was done, I decided I needed to head back to my home village and see how they were doing. Hey, Boom, I'll be back. You hold down the fort while I'm gone. On days 10 through 12, I arrived at my home village, and it was being raided by pillagers. I immediately ran to help. Hiya! Take that, pillagers, scum! The pillagers were swarming the village. I took out a few of them on my way to the center of the town, but the pillagers just seemed to keep coming and coming. Even after I killed the last one, another raid would start. I even had to fight off a ravager and a king pillager. But eventually, the raid was over. Ha <laughs> ha! 
we did it. Well, I did it. Great job not dying, guys. Uh, yeah, we still don't like you, Frank. Yeah, kind of crazy that you like think we're just cool now. But I just helped save the village. I'm not gonna hurt you now. Yeah, right now. But what about when you start craving blood? Okay, come with me now and see where I keep my cows. Your village is in shambles, so you have to rebuild anyway. After you visit my base, if you trust me, you can stay, and I will build you a safer and cooler base with a big wall to keep out pillagers. Okay, fine. We'll see if your base is cool. On days 13 through 15, I made it back home, and some villagers arrived with me. Welcome home, everyone. I began expanding on my base, turning it into more of a village. I built a few simple houses for the villagers, and I started working on a wall, but didn't have enough resources to finish it. Hey, maybe you aren't half bad after all. Aw, oh, thanks. Welcome to my village. Since you seem cool, I'm gonna put you in charge of everything while I'm gone. Oh. Okay, seems like a lot of responsibility. I gotta go find someone who can help me get stronger. Okay, good luck with that. Okay, bye! Wait, I think I know somebody who could relate to your struggle. They were banished as well. You can find them in the freezing cold mountaintops, and they go by the name Bramus. Uh, that is all I know. You're a real one, villager too. Thank you for your help. Oh. By the way, more villagers from my village are on the way. I set off towards the tundra to search for the one known as Bramus. On days 16 through 18, I arrived in the tundra. As I began heading toward the mountains, I was ambushed by Frostmancers. They started attacking me with freezing cold winds. Ah, the cold burns. I used my blood powers and iron sword to fight them off. And eventually I defeated all of them, but one. I decided to use the last one to get some information. Where can I find the one called Bramus. You mean that dude that got banished? Why do you care about him? That's none of your concern. Tell me where he is and I might just spare you. Okay, I'll tell you. He lives north of here at the top of a mountain. Please, just let me live. Nah, you must die. I killed him and left to continue my search for Bramus. On days 19 through 21, I reached the top of the mountain, but I only found a bed and a campfire. Hello, is anyone here? Out of nowhere, a giant villager with an ice club started wailing on me. I fought back with my sword, but their hits were hurting really bad. Ah, stop, stop, I come in peace. He wasn't stopping, but a mutant villager emerged from behind me and started speaking. Curtis, enough, he said he's nice. Hold up, bug bug. Phew, thank you. You really pack a punch, Brutus. Hold up, hold up. You must be Bramus. I've been looking for you. I'm the one that they call Bramus. What do you need from me? I'm looking for somebody who can train me. I heard we share a similar story and that you are a fierce warrior. You were banished from a village too. Yes. I used to be one of the best knights in the land till I was captured by pillagers. They experimented on me and disfigured my body and then they sent me back home. My village didn't want me anymore. That's so sad. You didn't ask to be that way, but they rejected you anyway. Well, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. I was rejected from my village for being a blood villager, but now there is a blood pillager who is trying to destroy every village. I don't think they should be doomed just for being afraid of me. It's very wise of you. So will you help train me to fight? To be honest, I don't know much about blood magic, but I can teach you some other fundamentals. Stay in my camp for the night and we'll start early in the morning. Thank you. I can't wait to get started. I immediately settled in for the night to make sure I was fully rested for my training in the morning. On days 22 through 24, I woke up and Bramus was already up waiting for me. <sighs> hey, did you eat breakfast without me? Yes, let us begin. Your first challenge will be to scale up and down the mountain as fast as possible. Okay, here we go. <sighs> I started scaling the mountain and it was really hard. Eventually, I made it back down, but not very quickly. Not fast enough. Do it again. <sighs> again? I scaled up and down again, and this time I was a little bit faster. <sighs> oh, <sighs> was that fast enough? No, again. Uh, I went again, and this time was my best yet. Good. Enough. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Next, you must improve your hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Fight Brutus over here. Huh? Oh. Ah! Brutus then swung at me with his club. He just kept swinging at me, and there was nothing I could do to stop him. Eventually, I was forced to use my blood magic to knock him out. Oh, 
Okay, well, that was supposed to be a test of your hand-to-hand combat, but I guess you did incapacitate him. So let's move on. Your final challenge will be to help you channel your blood magic. Since that seems to be your strength, I don't know a lot about it, but all magic is kind of the same, so let's try this. Close your eyes and focus on the blood flowing throughout your body. Connect with the energy that's flowing within you and channel that energy into your hands. I closed my eyes and did what he said. I realized I could sense the power within me in a way I had never felt before. I channeled the energy to my hands and opened my eyes. I feel so much stronger now. Look, I have the power within me to take on anything. As I said these words, I became a bloodier villager and gained 10 more hearts. My blood staff also transformed into an insanity sword. Whoa, awesome. Thank you so much for your help, Bramus. If you would like, you are welcome to come stay at my village. Thank you for the offer, but no. Why not? I'm afraid the village would call me a freak or stone me or run me out of town again. I see. Well, if you ever change your mind, ask around for the Blood Villager. If it's a village in the area, they will know where to find me. You will always be welcome there. Thank you, Bonzo. No, thank you, Master Bramus. With that, I began the long trek back home. On days 25 through 27, I returned home to find Tyrus the Blood Pillager, wrecking havoc on my base. Everything was on fire. The villagers were running around in fear, chased by a pack of alpha insane dogs. Those dogs are insane. Good thing I've got some insanity myself. I immediately took on the dogs with my new insanity sword. They were so fast, and they shot so much blood at me with their blood magic powers. But I was eventually able to take them out and put out some of their fires. Tyrus. You'll pay for this! Ha! You're too late for that! I've already made a deal with the all-seeing eye! The what now? Never mind. You're not cool enough to know anyways. Have fun with what's left of your puny village. <laughs> the blood pillager vanished in a puff of red smoke. After he was gone, Boom helped me put out the rest of the fires and rebuild what we could that was damaged. Looks like he killed the villager I put in charge before I left. Rest in peace, buddy. <laughs> Tyrus will pay for this one day. Not to worry, I have more friends who would love to live here. We'll get this place up and running again. Thanks, nerd. I started making a plan for revenge right away. Maybe I could hit him hard by seeking out his family. On days 28 through 30, I decided I needed to make a Blood Villager statue to let the world know the Blood Villagers live on. I needed materials to get started, so I traveled to the Badlands to gather all the terracotta my heart desired. On the way back, I found some sheep and brought them to the base. I put them in the pen where the cows used to be and then dyed them with some red flowers, bred them, and sheared them. I started working on the statue's legs with the help of Boom. Once the legs were done, we stepped back and admired our progress. Looks good, doesn't it, Boom? A villager came up to the statue to view our work. Eh, I don't like it. The abstract nature is unseen. Well, it's not done yet. It's just the legs. Oh, okay. I killed her to set an example for the rest of them. Hmm, teach you to be such a critic. On days 31 through 33, I decided it was time to upgrade my tools again. Hey, Boom, get ready. We're gonna go mine some diamonds. <coughs> Together, Boom and I headed into the mines to find some diamonds. <coughs> <gasps> diamonds! Gimme, gimme! Together, we were able to gather enough to make a pickaxe, an axe, and a chest plate. Nice work, buddy. On our way out of the cave, we ran into the witch again. Ugh, I was hoping I wouldn't have to see you again. What is it? My pet's thunder screamer is missing. Quick, follow me to my hut. Ugh, <sighs> fine. I followed the witch out of the cave to her swamp. On days 34 through 36, I arrived at the witch's hut. Here, take this. It's a thunder feather to help you get to my pet. I don't know what this means or how it'll help me. Next, she brewed up a splash potion and threw it at me. Whoa, what are you? Once she threw the potion, I was suddenly teleported to a field. What the heck? Where am 
I? I looked around, and all I could see was a bunch of honeycomb. I guess I'm supposed to be looking for something called a thunder screamer? I saw a cage with a bird, surrounded by lightning, trapped inside, and it was guarded by a bunch of mutant bees. Okay, big buff bees. I don't want to have to fight you. They started charging at me, and started trying to sting me. Okay, insanity sword it is, I guess. Using my sword and blood magic, I fought off the mutant bees' vicious stings, and was able to overpower them all. Buzz, buzz, fools. I ran to the cage and set the witch's pet free. It just flew off toward the horizon, so I followed it, hoping that was the way back to my base. Whoa, wait up! On days 37 through 39, I traveled through the forest, following the flying thunder screamer. Suddenly, I was face to face with the queen bee of the hive. Uh-oh, this can't be good. She looks angry. Excuse me, are you the one who killed all of the mutant bees? Yes, I am. And if you want to kill me, I understand. But I'll warn you, I don't go down without a fight. No, I, I wanted to thank you for ridding the world of these horrible mutants. They've been stealing all of my bees, honey, and making them go hungry. Oh, uh, yes, you're very welcome, your highness. For your service to the bee queendom, I award you this really cool poison staff. Wow, thank you so much for the gift. I'll wield it proudly. Before, Before you go, I must warn you, the blood pillager Tyrus was recently spotted in these woods. Thank you, your majesty. If he tries anything, I will be ready for him. Go forth, brave hero. On days 40 through 42, I wanted to try out the sweet new staff gifted to me by the queen. Let's fire this baby up. I came across a campfire with a villager locked up nearby. I was about to approach them when I noticed a squirrel standing guard. Huh? A squirrel? All right, well, this should be easy. It wasn't. The squirrel suddenly transformed into a horrible beast. It was a changeling. Ah, nope, 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 nope. It was a really tough fight, but I was able to poison it with my new staff and then finish it off with some good old blood magic. Whew, that thing was super freaky. I set the villager free, and they thanked me for helping. The bloody pillager's new lackey locked us up. He's a dealer of evil deals. Huh, okay, I'll keep an eye out for him. I think this might be a trap, so you better follow me back to my base. Okay. On days 43 through 45, I arrived back at my base. Ah, uh, feels good to be back. Some new villagers had arrived while I was away, so I built some more houses for them. I also gave a few of them professions, like a blacksmith and a farmer. I have the sudden urge to till some soil. Great, you should do that. Also, we worked on the wall for you. Awesome, I forgot about that. I started to feel bad about the villager I killed earlier for not liking my statue. Eh, nah, he probably deserved it. I started working on the statue again, and Boom joined in to help. We built up the torso and the arms, using a lot of terracotta and red wool for the blood. While we admired our handiwork, a villager came up to comment. Hey, I really like the statue so far. Thank you, but I don't want you to fear me. You're allowed to not like the statue if you want. Well, it does look kind of weird without a head. <laughs> Well, I decided I needed to take a trip to the nether to get my mind off of my questionable leadership decisions. Plus, maybe I could find some clues to my origin as a blood villager. On days 46 through 48, I went mining for some obsidian to make a nether portal. On the way, I also found some more diamonds and finished my diamond armor set. I built a nether portal and entered the nether to explore. I started finding all kinds of new materials that would be helpful for my statue. I collected a bunch of netherrack and soul sand. As I continued into the nether, I ran into Bramus and Brutus. Hey, my pals! They were fighting some echo men, which looked like some freaky shadow people who were swarming the area. Ah, I'll help you. I ran in to aid them in battle. And with the three of us, we took them down easily. Hey, thanks for the help. You're welcome. I think we had it handled ourselves, though. Booga, booga, ooga, booga. Yes, we still do appreciate the help. Wait, can you understand him? However, there is another fight we could use your help with. We need to defeat the Echo King. He's stolen our totem of regeneration, a new experiment I've been working on. All right, let's do it. Great, he's just this way. On days 49 through 51, we arrived at a giant nether base, and the outside was filled with Echoer Brutes. We fought through them together as a team. They were strong, but Brutus was stronger, and he killed off most of them. 
After the long battle, we killed off the last brute and entered the nether base. Man, this place is huge. Yes, a battery echoey. After wandering through the base for a while and getting up to the third level, we found the Echoer King and confronted him. When he saw us, he started making clones of himself. Hey, Jimmy, go for a different clone. Ooh, ooga, ooga. Brutus! Bramus and I killed off all the clones, and Bramus approached the Echoer King himself. I know that the totem, Echoer King, there need not be more bloodshed. No! Fiatbers, Eatbers. Hosers, weepers. And you leave me no choice. And with that, Bramus killed the Echoer King. He then picked up the Totem of Regeneration triumphantly. Yeah! Victory! That was when we noticed that Brutus really wasn't doing well. Uh-oh, Brutus, are you okay, buddy? Hang in there, Brutus. We'll get you home safe. No. No. He can talk? Yeah, boss. Beautiful. With those final words, Brutus died. No! No! He said you're beautiful. I I need to go. Wait, Bramus, wait! I tried to follow him, but I lost him in the nether. I decided I had to continue on without him. As I traveled through the nether for days 52 through 54, I ran into the nether scourge. He seemed friendly enough, so I approached him to see if he had answers for me. Hey, Nether Scourge, do you know why bad things happen to good people? Well, I don't know if I can answer that, but I may have other answers you seek, Blood Villager. Oh, really? Yes, you see, long ago my kind invaded the overworld with the goal of conquering it. We needed a way to spread our power, so we infused our blood in a few villages with the intention of spreading our powers to all of them. But the villagers were not happy with the powers our disciples possessed. The villagers perished most of them, and the Nether Scourge were forced to retreat back to the Nether. Huh, okay. So that's how Blood Villagers came to be. What about Blood Pillagers? Once they discovered the existence of Blood Villagers, they sought out the power of Blood Magic. They looked for answers in the Nether like you. They found me, and they begged me to make a deal with them. They wanted me to grant them the same curse in order to help them defeat villagers more easily. So I did, and I killed one of them as payment. Wow, thank you for this information. Now it all makes sense. You're kind of like my great-great-grandfather. No, not really. Oh, great father, will you bestow me an upgrade to help me defeat the evil blood pillager, Tyrus? I've already given you so much, and now you ask more of me? Please! Uh, okay, fine. Take this Ender Sword. It is a sword that has the power of the Ender. Awesome! But why are you so willing to help me? I'm just a lowly blood villager, after all. The all-seeing eye must die. This is all I can say. Now leave before I decide to eat you. Ah! I ran off to return to the overworld. On days 55 through 57, I went back through the portal, into the overworld. And on the other side of the portal, somebody was waiting for me. What do you want, buddy? I'm Dante, the pillager dealer. I'm on a mission from Tyrus, and you're the guy I'm looking for. Oh, okay. So what are you going to do to me? Well, if I'm being honest with you, I hate that blood pillager loser. Oh, I see. Do you want to help me beat him then? Yeah, I've been going through some stuff. I think that might help me clear my conscience a little. Great! You can just follow me back to my base, and we can start planning our attack. Well, I don't know about that. See, if I don't return to Tyrus, he'll just kill me right away. Okay. Hmm. Why don't you return to Tyrus then? And you can spy on him and relay information back to me. Okay. That sounds like a better plan. We both went our separate ways. I returned to my base to finish the statue, and Boom even helped me. We finished the head of the statue, and it looked awesome. I went to go tell all the villagers, but when I got there, I overheard the villager I put in charge talking to another one. To be honest, I don't think he's doing a very good job. I think I should be king of this village. Excuse me? I'm not the king of this village. We are a democracy. A democracy that kills its members for not liking statues? Oh, come on. It was one time. <laughs> That sounds like a great idea, Boom. 
For days 58 through 60, I entered the arena and the whole village was watching. Whoa, when did you guys build this? The librarian villager was waiting for me. The librarian lunged at me and the fight began. The crowd cheered. You're a bad leader who deserves to die. We'll see about that. This librarian was a great fighter for some reason. They used their diamond sword as well as the power of music. They shot music notes at me, but eventually I struck the final blow with my insanity sword and defeated him. The crowd started cheering my name. As I was celebrating my victory, I was greeted by a pillager I had never seen before. Hello, Bronzo. I'm Tyrus's brother, Aragorn. Hey, buddy. I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm still revved up from the last fight. So you're gonna have to give me a good reason not to strike you down where you stand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. I'm here because I want to help you take down Tyrus. Okay, fine. Follow me back to my base. On day 61 through 63, I made it back to my base with Tyrus's brother, Aragon. But Tyrus was waiting there for me, and he was lighting my statue on fire! No! <laughs> I see you've met my traitor brother. You are the real traitor brother, a traitor against decency. Ha! Aragon charged at his brother, and they fought tooth and nail against each other. They were both giving it their all, but eventually, Tyrus overpowered his brother. Ha! I always knew you were the weaker brother. See you on Thanksgiving. And with that, Tyrus left. Bronzo, I'm sorry. I failed you. It's okay. You will become a great warrior working under me. But for now, go get settled in. After that, the villagers gathered and worked together to help me rebuild the statue. And as I was admiring my handiwork, Bramus arrived. Bramus, what are you doing here? I've been doing some thinking and uh, I think I'd like to move in here after all. I'm glad to hear that, Bramus. You are more than welcome. We will need your strength soon enough. From days 64 to 66, I decided to head back to the blood forest to check on how the observer is doing. Hope he's still there. I arrived and he was next to some kind of shrine, but he quickly told me to hide before the all seeing eye came. Um, okay. The all seeing eye arrived and I listened to what was going on. You shouldn't be doing this, Dylan. Merging with the pillager is far too dangerous. Don't call me that. Call me the all seeing eye. Okay. Calm down, bro. Anyways, why shouldn't I? I have to destroy the Nether Scourge once and for all. He's become too powerful. I created that dumb blood pillager, and I can destroy him too. I can sense you will be here any moment now. I'm here. What do you need me for, master? Stand still. This won't hurt too much. Hat, what do you mean by that? I then watched as the all-seeing eyes merged with the blood pillager and gained a body from it. <laughs> I have arms and legs. Now I can finish what I started. The all-seeing eye then left. The blood force won't be safe much longer. Follow me. On day 67 through 69, I followed the observer into a dark forest. You have to explain to me what happened back there. The heck was that thing? That thing is the all-seeing eye. It came to this land thousands of years ago and started creating terrible things. One of its creations was the Nether Scourge, which is what ended up creating you. It is the origin of all power in this land and has grown far too powerful. It must be stopped. Well, now that thing is in Tyrus, so what can I do to stop it? You can't. There is no way. If you attempt to do this, you will surely die. Yeah, yeah, I know. The prophecy, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I will defy the prophecy and destroy him. I don't know anything about a prophecy. I just think you can't be a guy who is basically a god. On days 70 through 72, I made it back home and went to tell Aragon what happened to his brother. You know what? Enough of this. I know where his base is, so I'm going to find him and I'm going to take him out myself. You can't do that. It's too dangerous. Aragon was determined and he ignored my pleas, so I followed after him. Eventually, we arrived at the base of the all-seeing eye. Aragon, wait. Are you sure about this? Yes. This is something I have to do. From days 73 to 75, I followed Aragon into the All-Seeing Eyes base. Out of nowhere, we were both attacked by some Wither Guards. I knew this was a bad idea. You want a piece of me, you dumbheads? But eventually, we killed them all and moved on. 
come on. He's up ahead. Eventually, we made it to the all-seeing eye. Tyrus, I can't believe you've done the deal. You're weak. Weak is anything but that. We're stronger. We're smarter. We are better. We are better. The all-seeing eye then charged towards Aragon and began bashing him. I stepped in to help fight. Get away from him, you one-eyed freak. The all-seeing eye was powerful. He used his eye staff to battle and summon lightning. He's too strong. We have to retreat. Oh, no. I don't think so. I'm done playing around with you. You're just a pig like the rest of them. Suddenly, Aragon was turned into a wild pig who wanted to kill me. I was forced to fight him. No, Aragon, it's me, Bronzo. Stop attacking me. I had no choice but to kill Aragon. No! How could you do that to your own brother? He is not my brother anymore. You better run before I turn you into a pig as well. I didn't want to take any chances, so I ran far and fast. On days 76 through 78, I escaped the lair of the all-seeing eye. I kept running and running, not knowing if he could be behind me, until eventually I ran into Dante. Oh, hey, Bronzo. I was just heading back to the blood pillager to keep spying on him. You really don't want to do that. Tyrus is no longer what he used to be. He's been consumed by a being known as the all-seeing eye. Whoa, boy. I've heard of the all-seeing eye. That thing is bad news. I think I might be some help with it though. Yeah, so you better follow me back to my base and we can plan our attack. We made it back to my base and Dante told me the info he had. I think I might know the all eyes weakness. I saw it scream in horror once after staring in the night sky. I think its weakness is dark matter. Thank you for the information, Dante. Make sure you get yourself settled in here. You will be safe. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna need to enlist some extra help. I went out in search of the witch to begin in the next phase of the plan. On day 79 through 81, I arrived back at the witch's swamp. Hey there, Bronzo. It's good to see you again. I've been wanting to thank you for saving my beloved Thunder Screamer. How can I ever repay you? I need your help pushing my limits as a blood villager so I can level up. I think I might know a way, but I will need some items. I need a vial of blood and a few apples. I thought you might. I'll get those for you and be back soon. With that, I left the swamp and headed back toward the Observer once again. I should have just gotten some extra blood while I was there. As I was traveling, I figured I should grab some raw meat for the trade, and I stumbled upon a pillager camp. I quickly dispatched the pillagers, killed their livestock, collected the meat, and continued on my way. On days 82 to 84, I headed back to the Observer and offered him some raw meat. Hey, I need some blood. I see you're still alive and kicking. Hand over the meat. I handed over the raw meat and he gave me a bottle of blood. What will you be using that for? I plan to push the boundaries and become stronger with the witch's magic. Be careful with that. Don't fly too close to the sun. Thanks. I'm out of here. As I exited the dark forest, I was attacked by some dark forest zombies. Stay back, I'll kill ya. They were the fastest zombies I had ever seen. Eventually though, I defeated them and moved on. I then found a regular forest and started chopping down the trees and just waited for the leaves to decompose so I could get the apples. Nice, there's one, I'll be taking that. I had all the ingredients for the witch, but I decided I wanted to finish my statue completely before heading back. When I made it back home for days 85 and 86, I got distracted by my statue. I needed just a few more details to be fully finished. As usual, Boom helped me put on the finishing touches. We stepped back to admire our finished masterpiece. Thanks, Boom! Now I gotta go finish my training with the witch. As I was leaving to return to the witch, I ran into Bramus, standing all alone. Hey, Bramus, how are you settling into things here? Well, I am still pretty upset about losing my best friend. Yeah, that's really hard. I know he died an honorable death, but I still think it should have been me. Don't worry, Bramus. Your time will come. I will need your help for this final battle. With that, I left to return to the witch's swamp once again. On days 87 through 89, I made it back to the witch and gave her the things she required. Okay, this is a yummy apple potion. Drink up? This isn't gonna make me teleport again, is it? Just drink it! I drank it, and I transformed again into a larger blood villager. Whoa, 
I am pumped up. I gained some more hearts as well as growing bigger in size. Now I am unstoppable. She also gave me a gun with the ability to shoot dark matter. This is perfect. Wow, I'm receiving interference from the magic realm. Sounds like you changed the outcome of your future. Sounds like you just might live. Oh yeah, thanks witch. All right, now don't come back, we're square now. On days 90 through 92, I wanted to test out my new gun on some mobs. First I went to the desert and found some husks and obliterated them. Way too easy. Suddenly, a mutant husk came out of nowhere to challenge me. That's more like it. They threw blocks of sand at me and used their ground pound. They also summoned more husks and hit me pretty hard. Eventually, I was able to defeat them all and kill the mutant husk. This dark matter gun is really strong. Before I continued my preparations, I decided I needed to speak to the Nether Scourge one last time. I traveled back to the Nether Portal and jumped in. On days 93 and 94, I entered the Nether once again. I ran into some Wither Skeletons, but they were no match for my strength. I killed them and moved on. As I was wandering through the Nether, I realized I had gotten turned around. Huh, which way was the Nether Scourge again? Just then, a piglin walked up to me, which reminded me of when I was a piglin for 100 days. Hey there, you look lost. Need some directions? Yeah, I'm looking for the Nether Scourge. Any idea where I could find him? Yeah, I know where to find him, but it's gonna cost you. How much? 10 gold ingots. 10? Ugh, fine. I'll be right back. I collected some gold nuggets and crafted them into 10 golden ingots and then brought them back to the piglin. Thank you very much. The nether scourge is right over there. Ah, of course, he's there. Thanks. On days 95 and 96, I made it back to the nether scourge. Nether scourge, I need to tell you, the all-seeing eye has gotten a body. Well, it's too late then. Defeating him will be impossible, I'm afraid. Well, somebody has to try, and I think I might be able to, with your help. Will you fight with me? No, I will not fight him because I think it's impossible, but I will give you a piece of my body. Don't you need your body? Yes, doing this will cost me my life. It is time for me to self-destruct. What? And with that, the Nether Scourge died but he dropped four netherite ingots. I will upgrade my armor and wear this with honor. I headed out to return to my base and speak with my people. From days 97 and 98, I ran into a few upset spirits. I took quick care of them because there were more important things on the line than fighting ghosts. See ya, dumb dums As I walked through the nether, I saw a cold strider. It looked like it needed some help. Help me! Sure, buddy. Lead the way. I guarded the Strider towards its home, and I was attacked by more spirits. I fought them all off and made it back to the lava pool. Thank you, thank you! Sure thing, buddy. After returning the Strider to its family, I made it back to the portal and returned to the overworld. On day 99, I finally made it back to my base and upgraded my armor to netherite armor. Yeah! Cover me in debris! I then went and gathered more people for a big speech. Everybody, listen up! I will be heading into battle now, and according to the prophecy, I may never return. I will be confronting the all-seeing eye, and I will destroy him once and for all. In order to ensure my success, there is one thing you can all do to help me. I need you to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell to turn on notifications so you never, ever miss another upload. Bramus came up to me before I left. I'm coming with you. Okay, I know I won't be able to stop you. And with that, we headed out to confront the all-seeing eye. On day 100, I finally confronted the all-seeing eye. It's too late for you, Dylan. I am way too powerful now for you to defeat. Foolish mortal, I created you everyone before you. I will destroy you easily. Oh yeah? That you didn't expect me to have this dark matter gun? I attacked him with the dark matter gun. 
and the fight began. We exchanged blows for a while. The fight raged on, and with Bramus on my side, we started to overpower him. But then it took a turn for the worse. Bramus was hurt. Bramus! Oh, Daddy, look at that dog. He's a valiant warrior. There's no bridges. No! Fueled by rage, I charged the all-seeing eye and dealt a final blow. I then oh. defeated him. I did it. That was for Brutus, Bramus, and all the blood villagers. Bronzo!